Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. Today, I'll show you my bow tie collection and I'll tell you the story of how I built it, what bow ties I'm always looking for, what colors, how I wear them, and anything else you wanted to know about bow ties. So most bow timers love them because most other men don't wear them. Up until maybe 10, 15 years ago, bow ties were just a fraction of the sales of regular neckties. Personally, I love to wear neckties and bow ties, but it wasn't always like that. However, that all changed when I started wearing bow ties more frequently. In the beginning, it was slightly uncomfortable, but I had seen other men pulling it off in a very sophisticated, elegant way, and sometimes you have to do things that make you uncomfortable to improve your style and grow. One thing I noticed at first was that most bow ties all had pretty much the same shape and size. While when I was going through my archives of vintage men's fashion magazines, I saw that there were hundreds of different shapes and also different sizes. If you read men's style books, most people will tell you that a bow tie should be proportionate to your face and they show like the width of your face should be about the width of your bow tie. Personally, I don't adhere to that theory. I believe that you can wear different bow ties with different sizes depending on your mood because after all, it's a way to express yourselves and if you go back in history, you see men wearing different bow ties and different sizes as well. So without further ado, here's my collection. Let's start with the red tones because red in bow ties is one of the most popular colors. Obviously, I have a bunch of them and even in our shop, we have quite a few Fort Belvedere bow ties in red. However, before I started designing our own bow ties, of course, I had my own collection. Probably the most common pattern is a micro pattern. It's what I'm wearing here right now, and it's basically a red background with either dots, little paisleys, or other small motifs that are repetitive on the bow tie. They're so popular because they're easy to combine with striped shirts, solid shirts, as well as solid suits, and they just add a little bit of pattern to your outfit without being overpowering. If you're a follower, you know that I only wear self-tie bow ties, and so everything in my collection is self-tie. The bow tie I'm wearing is made of a red metal silk, and you can find it in a shop here. It has those diamond ends which are pointed, which allow you to tie your bow tie in a way that always looks a bit non-symmetrical, which is exactly what you want to achieve. Otherwise, it looks like a pre-tied bow tie, and that's the hallmark of a schoolboy. This one is made out of wool shelly, in a very muted red. This shape here is slightly bigger with a somewhat more shiny silk, but it has a chalky grip. This one here is lightly a matter silk. It has blue and silver tones, very subdued, works well with blazers. This one has yellow tones. It's more contrasty. I like it in the summer. This one is more chalky again, which is great for tweed outfits. This one's a classic red with a standard micro pattern that is spaced a little more apart. This one is very dark burgundy with paisleys, and it's a good option if you wanna wear a bow tie without standing out too much. These dots here are very bold, and it's only something if you're willing to make an even bolder statement other than just wearing a bow tie. If you wanna top it off, you can even go with this kind of a bold spot, but it's really only for people who are very comfortable with what they wear. Another pattern I like quite much in a smaller size with a larger pattern is this one a typical vintage English matter silk. And we still offer that kind of silk in our shop. It's a process that takes much longer, is more expensive, but I think it's worth it. This is kind of a bold paisley tie. Paisley is a traditional pattern with origins in India that you can find all over in classic menswear. This one is oversized, so you don't see a full repeat in the bow tie, which is rather unusual, which is why I added it to my collection. Here's another paisley with kind of an all over pattern. This one here is quite cool because it's an unusual geometric pattern. Another favorite of mine is this bow tie. It's a red tone. It's a mix of wine and maybe purple. It's very unusual and hard to find. Also, the motives on it appear like they're circling and repeating. This one here is more rep stripe inspired, very classic, something you'd wear with a preppy outfit. This is a red velvet bow tie, which is a prototype from Fort Belvedere, which I like to wear for evening occasions. And it's different than a black bow tie, yet it's very festive and it sparkles in the light, which is just beautiful. 
This one is another one of our designs. It has a very bold houndstooth pattern. It is made out of a matte silk burette silk, which is very hard to find because most of the time silk bow ties are shiny. And at Fort Bevelier, we always try to be different and add things to your wardrobe that are not just run of the mill. This one here has a classic stripe that you might know from a rep bow tie, but we use a very soft shantung silk with blue and red as a background. So it has a very nice color depth and it works well with any kind of blazer outfit or business suit, yet it's a bit more casual because of its texture. Next up, let's talk a bit about my black bow ties. Black bow ties for most men are probably the first bow tie they wear because it's something they need maybe at a prom, at a wedding, whenever they wear a tuxedo or the dress code requires black tie. To learn everything you need to know to look your best, please check out this video here and we also have a free black tie PDF guide. We even went so far to create a guide about what black bow tie is best for your requirements. So you can check it out here. So my collection obviously includes all the black Fort Belvedere bow ties, which are quite a lot. We have styles in a classic silk satin, which is a very high-end satin from Italy. We also have a Berethea, which is more matte. We also have a fine rib grain and a really wide rib grain, which is very unusual and hard to find, as well as velvet bow ties. All of them come in different sizes and shapes, and we're also one of the few stores that offers them in a single end bow tie, which was something that very elegant gentlemen wore, particularly in the 30s and in the 20s. One thing that sets our black bow ties apart from others is they come with a fixed neck size. Most bow ties today have an adjustable sizer, which is quite handy and it's also better to stock things, otherwise it gets quite expensive. Now we go to the extra effort to offer you a fixed length because it's a traditional way and when you untie your bow tie and take it off, you can see and you can show that it's actually made for you, just like a custom piece would be made for you. Before we offered our velvet bow ties, I actually had quite a few prototypes made from different fabrics and I still always keep them and I wear them because I test them, but ultimately what ends up in the shop is only what we like the most. Some other black bow ties that I like that are pretty cool is this one. It's kind of a pointed end with a somewhat asymmetrical shape and it's a vintage tie, I think from Ed or Conan. This one is a vintage moiré silk out of a very fine five fabric. It's called moiré because sometimes you see that effect on screen if you have a very small pattern. Um, it's also called watered silk sometimes, but in fact, it's never watered. To achieve this effect, you take two layers of fabric and run them through a press. It's a special process and you don't find it very often. The shape you see here is a very classic shape. It's like rectangular and when you tie it, you get a slightly thicker knot. If you use a thicker fabric, sometimes a knot can be too big. So this works best if you have a thinner fabric. Personally, my favorite evening bow tie shape is this one here, which is based on a 1930s model and it has just wonderful curves and it's very elegant. Another cool bow tie is this one from the Gatsby collection from Brooks Brothers. It has white tips as well as white areas where you knot it. So when you knot the bow tie, you have white at the ends as well as in the knot and it's like a vertical white strip. So you have four vertical white strips, which is quite dashing. Next up, let's look at the blue bow ties. Again, just like with the regular neckties, blue so popular in menswear that a lot of bow ties also come in blue. Here we have some bold spots again, which is not something I'd suggest just starting out with because it's quite loud. For a beginner, something like this one or this one would be much better. Once you have the small micro panels covered, you can slightly move up in size and go with something like this one here with green and red or this one here out of a more twill kind of jacquard silk with red and white accents. Or you could get something with smaller items but a higher contrast. However, you can also find them in other colors such as here with kind of a cream with a green, which really changes the overall look quite considerably. Of course, it's also good to have some rep stripes or you can go with checks like in this bow tie. As you can see, this bow tie has an asymmetrical cut. It was a prototype we made and we still have some bow ties in this shape. They weren't quite as popular with people. I think they didn't quite understand. The big advantage is that you can tie them in two different ways. The rounded part can be up or down, which creates a different look and people can't quite tell if that's it, but um, it's exactly the effect you want to achieve, which is not being too symmetrical. Obviously, these are also more unusual colors. This is kind of a very faded light brown. 
This is kind of a purple that works really well in summer. Another good option for summer is a linen bow tie, such as this one, which is very light blue. Another favorite of mine for summer is this one here, which is very dark with some red background, so it peeks out, and it's the same stripe you can see here in the mannequin. It's just a different color. Most of the time, striped bow ties are angled, kind of a 45 degree angle, so we try to do something different and create this one. It's not something I wear a lot, but I wanted to have different things for different occasions. This one here came with the vintage tuxedo I bought and it's navy blue. It has a diamond shape, it's kind of a berethea, but for black tie, you should always go with black bow ties, even if the fabric is midnight blue. Here we have some navy velvet prototypes in single end and regular. Another red color for bow ties is purple. So this one here has white dots, which are quite contrasting. This one here is from Fort Belvedere. It has much subtler paisley patterns, and because of that, I like it a lot. It works well with gray or navy, charcoal, but you can even wear it with green, so it's quite versatile. It is different, but it's not super loud. A wonderful addition to any gentleman's bow tie closet, in my opinion. This one is also cool. It has kind of a very subtle butterfly shape, so the knot looks different, and because of that, I wanted this bow tie. As you may have seen, we also have bow ties for white tie ensembles, and I believe it's the largest selection you can find in the world. Of course, they're all either single end or come in fixed neck sizes, because when you wear a white tie, you always have a wing collar and an adjuster would always show. I have all of them in my collection and I wear them whenever the dress code requires white tie, but I also have different ones that are vintage in different sizes. For example, this one here came in cotton in a different shape, kind of a medium size. This one here on the other hand was much smaller in a Marcella cotton. Now, compare the sizes of those two here. This one is from the 30s. This is probably more 60s or 70s inspired. That being said, probably in the 30s, no one would have worn a bow tie that big, but you definitely found difference in sizes a man would wear from very small to medium size to somewhat larger. Another underrated color in bow ties is green, and it's underrated menswear in general, so you can check out this video here if you want to learn how you can incorporate green into your wardrobe. So here is a very summery green bow tie with a vertical stripe from Fort Belvedere. And it was a limited edition fabric, so I don't think we have it anymore. But sometimes when you have bow ties, especially if they're in a coarse weave, such as a jacket weave, and you have a beard, you will find little threads pulling on the bow tie. Just think of it like your beard being sandpaper next to a very delicate fabric, and over time, you will get pulling threads. Now, you can cut them off, I use our nail clipper from our set because it allows me to get very close and be very accurate so I don't accidentally cut into the fabric. So always keep in mind when you wear bow ties, try to shave beforehand. It's good for your bow tie. And if you have a beard, definitely go only with printed bow ties because they have a much finer, tighter weave than like a jacket woven bow tie where you can actually see the weave because that is much more prone to pulling threads. I have different greens like this forest green, a striped green, kind of a medium green paisley pattern, a classic houndstooth barrette pattern from Fort Belvedere, as well as this unusual kind of turquoise rep stripe style silk. Last but not least, I have a bunch of bow ties that are all a little bit different. Their tones of brown, yellow, and orange are interesting patterns. First, it's like this tartan pattern here, which is something that works really well for Christmas parties. This one here is a bold dotted stripe made out of a limited edition silk by Fort Belvedere that we don't offer any longer. This one was a prototype out of a knitted bow tie. It's a knitted wool, but I found it was much too soft and flimsy. This one I thought was quite cool because again, it had this super large pattern on an unusual kind of creamy yellow background. This one here is a summary pattern from Fort Belvedere that we don't offer anymore. It's kind of Madras inspired and you can learn more about the Madras fabric in this guide here. Another cool bow tie with a really large oversized pattern without repetition. And then another Madras bow tie in a slightly different color scheme. This one you like a lot because it has these pale beige or buff background with elements of blue, orange, and green. Very unusual, but easy to combine. This one here is much bolder and kind of a bronze tone with blue dots. This one is more yellow and has finer white dots, but it looks very different than this one, even though both are dotted or spotted bow ties. This one here is a brown and pale blue paisley one in a very bold diamond shape. This one here I like to wear, especially with light blue shirts. It provides contrast. It's a great option for summer. 
it lightens up your outfit. And then of course, there are other silk bourrette ties from Fort Belvedere, which I'm a big fan of at the moment. Of course, I have all Fort Belvedere bow ties in my collection, but I didn't just list them here because we've mentioned them in other places. For the full selection, please go to our shop and check them out here. Obviously, this is a larger bow tie collection and it took me years to build it. I've had great luck at estate sales because people who are into bow ties tend to have a lot of them. And since not many are interested in them, you can pick them up at a very inexpensive price point. So if you wanna build a bow tie collection, my tip is take it slow, think about what you have in your wardrobe, get different pieces with different textures, different colors and different patterns and build something that works for you over time. If you like the glimpse into my bow tie collection, chances are you also wanna continue this wardrobe tour and check out my boot collection, shoe collection, cufflinks, rings and so forth. In today's outfit, I went with a classic blazer combination with a twist. First of all, the top part is part of a suit. It's a lighter shade of navy, it's double breasted and I paired it with a Winchester shirt that is striped in gray and white and added this red micro pattern bow tie from Fort Belvedere. It's made out of silk and you can find it in our shop here. It has diamond ends, makes the overall look very casual yet still sophisticated. My pocket square is linen. It picks up the blue tones from the bow tie as well as the red, but it's quite contrasting and it still stands out from the blazer without being too flashy. When you wear a bow tie, it's already louder than a lot of other things, so it pays to tone the rest down a little bit. For my slacks, I opted for a small, summery wool linen blend. It's kind of a little houndstooth pattern, so from afar, it looks like a lighter gray. When you come up close, you can see the pattern. It also wrinkles in a certain way, especially if you sit all day, but that's part of the linen optics, and that's good for summer. To tie the whole outfit together, I opted for burgundy derby shoes, and I combined them with a gray pair of shadow stripe socks because they're solid with a clock pattern on the side, which always goes well with patterned pants. Last but not least, my cufflinks are from Fort Belvedere. They are gold with lapis lazuli, and again, you can find them here. <laughs>